Hello everybody, my name is Farmer Finn and in today's video, winter is starting for us and we are bringing home the big bad bulls. We're bringing home the first bulls, so two batches of bulls, both batches of what, 39 and 36? Something like that. Something like that. So they're out of grass and this time of year we want to bring them home to have them in the shed, start feeding them, pushing them on to have some of them gone before Christmas. So. That's what we're doing. Father Phil has gone on ahead of us. We have Bro on the camera. Live behind. Bro's not too happy. But um, anyways, also this video is sponsored by Herdwatch. Herdwatch is for all your farm recording needs. We'll be using it later on in the video to uh, weigh the bulls, record missing tags, and put them in batches according to where we're putting them. But without further ado, we will be on to so the So we're out here now with the first batch of bulls. So these are our biggest bulls. These bulls, <laughs> We've been quite, we've been waiting to get into the way now because there is some super bulls on it. Which is your favorite one, Liv? Speckled Park. Speckled Park. There's one fantastic Speckled Park bull out here. So as you can tell, these are very tight on grass. Now, there is a bit of a thistle issue. We sprayed it last year. Didn't get sprayed this year because kind of checked the grass. But the bulls have been basically on the verge of no grass for quite some time. Meal. But we've been feeding them quite a lot of meal. Hence they're standing here by the troughs. Been feeding them now, not a lot of meal, but just enough to keep them settled, keeping them, keeping them fed. But we'll do a circle now, and hopefully they'll all follow us back for the shed. Here's that lovely speckled park. He's a lovely, lovely bull, so he is. So they're all bulls here. So hopefully now they'll follow us into the into the shed over here, and we we'll get them loaded up and home. Take two load to get them home. But these are. Some these are some of the best bulls we've had in yeah. years. Uh, so it could be the best bulls we've ever had now. They're, they're just very, very happy yeah. with them now. They're very happy with them. Hug! Sex! Yeah. And this guy's trying to break my my tail lights here. <laughs> Good boys! So that's the bulls in the yard there. Right, what? That is the easiest I think we've ever got bulls. Or no, I ever, no, got, no. ever got cattle in here. No. But usually a hard spot to get cattle into. It's not too bad now. So, I don't know what's happening. You're coming with me in the tractor or you're going to the Jeep? I'm going to the Jeep because I've ever been ready when I get out of there. Okay. Right. I, uh, you march on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't let them out. I don't know what's going on, but that is the easiest we've ever. Yeah. I'm going to jinx it now, but this is going incredibly well. Nearly too well. 76.18 on all and juhis. We will oh, just back in the yard now, wait for Father Phil to come back. So we have all power washed. Yeah, there's the muck on the floor. That's spent ages walking up and down trying to get all to go through the slats. And it just was not going to go through some of it. And we have this side, mill peat in it, ready for the bulls to go in. So for those of you that maybe aren't aware, mill peat, very environmentally sustainable product. It is the dried peat from the boglands. Um, we have uh, we have a we have a storage amount of it on an out farm in a big shed. We have maybe four or five trailer loads, so we loaded up two loads of the muck spreader back in. Turn on the muck spreader, spread it out. Made a video on it before, it actually works quite nicely in putting it out. Mill peat makes a great base to put straw on top of, and that's what we've done last year, worked very, very well. We used to use all mill peat bedding, but 
for obvious reasons, mill peat bedding is get actually getting quite hard to get. So we've moved, we're kind of moving ourselves away from that heading for straw and the straw blower, which worked perfectly last year. Did not expect the straw blower to work so well. Cattle stayed very clean. There was no, normally what we've seen when we bedded with straw, we used to just throw in a bale cattle, puck and ate the half of it. We used to see uh, drop in weight gains when we were doing that, no drop when we were with the straw blower. Just incredibly happy with how the straw blower worked. The only downside to it was every day you bedded the cattle, it wasn't every other day. But it saved straw at the same time, so six one half, just not other. But the mill peat's gone in. We do have grain the other side of the wall. Now the shed was built with a membrane up the wall, so it's not a problem. But the grain on the other side, we are waiting for to get our beans cut. When we get our beans cut, we get our beans and that rolled in the top shed above. And once we get our beans cut, we'll be putting, filling out the rest of that shed with our beans and our, alkyl, our barley. And then we'll empty out that shed and we'll bring in more bulls. So we'll be putting in 100 bulls now. No, it'll be less than 100 bulls. So we'll be putting in 50 this side. We'll be putting in 44, that's say 22 a side should be about right now yes we said we have 39 bulls coming back and we have 36 in the other batch so where are we going to get the other bulls so we're going to be putting in another we've two um, odd more batches of 60 so we'll be taking bulls from one of them batches to put in with the other bulls and then you say you can't mix bulls but well, we come across a little trick last year and I'll, I'll explain that later one thing we've done differently now with the slatted shed side is we're after putting in new drinkers so we also have our brushes in great job there we put in two new drinkers we were damned this last year or two where we had our own little bowl drinkers and all it took was one animal to poo in it that was it no water for the shed someone had to get in and scoop it out we have them mounted up high so hopefully they don't poo in them this time there's a guard rail around it and there is a bung in it so hopefully now it's not as big a problem as it has been. One other thing that we, two things that we'll be doing with the slatted shed too later on in the winter. We're going to put Yorkshire boarding on the back wall. And then hopefully next year we're kind of hoping to put in rubber mats on the upstand. Um, didn't have time to look at it this year, but maybe next year we get done. Something we want to do, and even Uncle Ian said it's something that we want to do. So I don't clear. Oh, Green also said he doesn't want to see the Yorkshire boarding go in at the minute. He says if we got a real warm spell in the middle or end of, all of September, the shed could get quite hot with the amount of cattle that will be in it. So leaving it off leaves a lot more ventilation. It's time to let these bulls into the mill peat. It's the first load of bulls in the shed. Come on up! Hey! Up! Hey! Up! Ah! Ah! Oh, just, yes. just, just have them bulls loaded up so that's the that farm cleared. No more cattle on it now for the rest of the winter. So, been a funny year with that farm or just uh, the, that bit of ground. Um, it got nitrogen, it got, it was spread to half of it, sorry. But the grass was never able to get ahead of the bulls this year. Last year, we had bullocks on it. We had more of them. They, they couldn't keep the grass out. Ah, but last year, the grass was growing fantastic there. This year, the grass was never able to get ahead of the bulls. Anyways, time to be on, get these lads in the shed. What? Bulls in. Time to get back a meal, get the next lads in, get them on the slats, and yeah. I'm driving. Take this gate out. Yeah, we'll take that gate out, we don't need it. I'm driving. Yes, man. Ah, <laughs> so, we're here in the next block of ground, just waiting for Father Phil to come in. Now, these bulls, they aren't out of grass, yeah, as you can see. They're getting tight, but they're not like the other lads. We could try and leave them out for another couple of weeks, but just want to get them in. They won't follow him in, will they? Everyone walk in. We <laughs> so stand here, bro. Stand here. You, you stand. You hold that, bro. I'll go back out through this gate and go behind them. Okay. 
can't do two things at once. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. So a load of these lads in. So now that is the boys in. So just waiting on another bale of hay to come down. So bale of hay this evening. Hopefully get the pay silage open tomorrow and the day feed are going. Um, along with all other work that's to be done, isn't that right, Liv? Oh, What's 360 there? Go away, which one is he? Where's 360? The horn. Oh, jeez, I remember him as a calf. Literally, reared himself when we got him. That's the bulls in the shed. You're wondering why that's like that. We put down a bit of concrete in the corner there to cover up a pipe that the bulls kept opening last year. Go through another bale of hay, get a couple of buckets of barley. That's them for tonight. And then tomorrow, me and Liv are going to weigh, clip, bring home another 24 bulls and kind of batch them and do all that fun stuff. So that is it for today. Happy out. Probably the handiest we've ever got away with bringing in bulls. Not that it's a hard job, but well everything went so well. Just straight in, job's done. Anyway, we'll pick it up again in the morning. That is the bulls out of the sheds. So we have the first pen, so that's everyone that's on the slatted shed. So we're going to clip them, we're going to weigh them, record them, make record them into their batches, and we have to take 14 bulls out of this pen to go in with the other shed of bulls. And we have the secret ingredient to stop bulls from acting eager when you mix them: cider vinegar. So I actually seen on Facebook last year. Um, some farmer in Canada put some cider vinegar on his stock bulls and he was putting them back in together and they didn't fight and then this spring when we got to we had five cattle five bulls here and four bulls there and three bulls there we put cider vinegar on them all we put them all in the one pen there wasn't a thing out of them normally if you try to put bulls together they'd absolutely be a hell out of other but it seemed to be with the cider vinegar it blocks, they can't smell. The cider vinegar is just so overpowering of a smell. They can't smell each other. They don't know who each other is. They don't seem to pass much heat in each other. That's the theory. It worked for us last year. So it should work again this year. So bro is clipping their tails. The reason we clip their tails is so that muck doesn't stick to their long hair and their tails. And then they start wiping themselves with more muck, more poo. And then we also clip the hair on their backs, which uh, helps them to uh, help them help stop them from overheating when they're in the shed helps keep them cool helps stop them sweating too much so that's what we're doing we'll also be recording making sure everyone has two tags and seeing what her weight gains were for the summer so i live will be back in we'll time lapse this and we will get these lads sorted so happy days we also have to get another 24 bulls home because when we take 14 bulls out of this pen that leaves us with 20 four i think to go in one side the slatted sheds so we'll bring back another 24 22 to go on the other end and happy days is we'll have the first two sheds of bulls in anyways we get these lads done good boy five and five Liv. lovely quiet bulls aren't they Liv? yeah what's there five and five yeah 370 so that is the first batch of bulls done and 20 minutes. 20 minutes that's good going we're clipping and weighing all at once and they're just lovely and quiet aren't they, they are actually. so just a little bit on this batch of bulls best way it was 495 mm. just short 500 the worst way it was 350 average weight would be somewhere around what would you say 410 420 maybe. there was a lot more over 400 than there was under so I'm quite happy with that. We need them at least 350 to be able to get them to 500 kilos by the time we want to kill them. So above 350 to us is bonus. So it is. Daily weight gains. Daily weight gains from? 0 0.7. 0 0.7 to? 1.1. 1.1. Averaging around? Probably 0 0.9. 0 0.9. 
So nearly a kilo a day, a couple of bulls done over a kilo a day on grass, which is quite good. And these lads were on owl pasture, no receded ground. So I'm quite happy with that. If I was received the ground, I might have done better. Something I want to try and get on top of for next year, a bit more receding. But quite happy with how these done. What do you think, Liv? Quite happy. So next job now is take out her 14 green mark bulls. They have no horns because the batch they're going in with has no horns. So keep keep one batch non not horny and another batch very horny. <laughs> Liv is smirking there, bro. <laughs> next lads, hopefully, will weigh even better. But anyway. We we'll get these by sword. Ready! So, after a brief pause because someone's latest editions wanted hey, to go too. wanted to go wandering, we got a few more goats, and they decided to go visit the neighbors. However, so they're either coming or going from doing harm. These are the next boys. So these should, av on average, be a good bit heavier than the other lads because these were the heaviest batch of boys going out. These went to one of our best bits of ground for feeding cattle. So one thing I did forget to say is that the bulls have are a little bit empty of themselves. So if we'd weighed the bulls yesterday when we brought them home, the bulls could have weighed 20-ish kilos heavier, 10, 10, 15, 20 kilos heavier. Come on, up, up. Um, because they'd have been full coming off the grass. Now they're empty because they spent the night on hay. They've kind of emptied themselves out. So they'd be that little bit lighter, but a six and one half dozen not But these are some right good bulls here now. Get them turned around and heading in the right direction. Come on, up, 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 no. Oh, you can see the kind of, these are lovely, lovely Frisian bulls, FRXs, might be a handful of JEXs in there but you can just see it in them. Time to do the very same thing again, only this time we have to put cider vinegar on these as they go through as these will be going with the 14 bulls we took out. So put the camera up in time lapse, we'll see how they go and see how our average weights are at the end. Just had to stop the time lapse here. 530 kilos, Frisian bull. Is he full Frisian? Doesn't matter, probably is. But super, full Frisian, super, super bull. At 530, we feed him for 90 days. Get a kilo and a half on him a day. He should kill out nearly 700 kilos live weight. Wouldn't be too bad. Anyways. Get more time lapse, get more bullets done. Who are we going to look at now, Liv? Mr. Speckle. Your favourite bull. So just another thing, this Jersey boy here, now he's not one of the actual Jersey boys, but this guy is fat coming off grass. And depending on what weight he is, he could be the next bull for the shop. And if he is, it's basically 100% grass fed Jersey beef, J-E-X beef. But anyways, this is Mr. Speckle. Absolutely lovely bull, 485 kilos. Thought he'd have weighed a bit better. It's quite a bit of fat on him. He is short, but he has, he has a bit of shape. Speckle Park's very, very happy with them. Daily weight gain? 1.3. 1 1.3 kilos a day. The next best freezing bull was what? 1.2. So he's 100 grams more a day than the next best freezing. Super bull. Anyways, we get these lads done. 28.02. 5.02. 
505. Woo! What is he? Jersey? Frisian cross. Cross. 505 kilos, 1.2 kilos a day. Huh? They're the bulls we like. On the boys. That has these bulls all clipped. Uh, cider vinegared and weighed. And they're a little bit more, what would you say, feisty? Yeah. Feisty, as in, though. just they're doing a lot more riding than they were beforehand, that's all. But on the weights, how her weights live, we have from 530, best weight back down to four, no, 375. 380. So from 530 to 380. Daily weight gains? 4.3s. You're good for your 1.3s. What would you say the average is? Around 1.1? So about 1.1 kilos a day on these lads and then the average weight for 50-ish so that has these bulls very very happy with them now a uh, bit disappointed we hadn't that we only had two over 500 thought we'd have a few more but we had quite a few up at 480 485 490 but um yeah and our jersey bull he's heading for the shop he was 440 kilos so that's heavy enough for us to get what we need off him but that's them boys so now let's let the other lads out of the shed put some cider vinegar on their backs and then let them in and let them back into the shed and hopefully all will be okay but overall quite happy with how they done the field is the, the field they were on um is um the field they were on isn't receded or anything but it is regarded as good fattening land the bullocks on it last year done very well and you can see it in the daily weight gains there and the weights are just a bit heavier than the last bulls and especially daily weight gains like there was a couple of Frisians there and Frisian Cross at 1.3 along with the Speckled Park. So we're very happy with them, with that. And just on the meal, if people say, is it the meal we were giving them? We're on meal about four weeks and so is the other pen of lads that we've done. We're all on about the same amount of meal for the last four weeks. So would that have done much? I don't know. But at the same time, very happy with how that's done. Why are you doing? Um, your arms around. I'm tired. see how it goes but we'll aim for the biggest lads we can get our hands on and hopefully all works out okay hopefully anyways we be on we get them so here's the boys i think the most of our speckled parks are in this group and two of the jersey boys are here too Fences nearly made it to the batch of calves that's up on this farm, but didn't. We got them in. Then the calves decided that they were going to go through the fences that the bulls pulled down. Uh, we, anyways, we got the bulls in eventually, and we got them sorted, and we got them loaded, and a gate fell down, and a bull got away, and mess. And eventually, got them sorted. Then the calves obviously gone for a wander, so tried to get them back. No. So we had to repair a lock of fences, put the calves on a different paddock, not where we would want them to be, but we'll be able to move them tomorrow when we feed them. But yeah, a lot of running and racing, and it's kind of left me tight on time now. So we're just going to unload these into the, straight into the slatted shed. Um, we have about 15 in the trailer, I think. So we need another few for, we'll get them tomorrow, fill up that pen, we'll clip dust the whole lot, or not dust, weigh them. And um, yeah. 
Yeah. And you got bro to give them all a lock of hay and another lock of meal and we'll try and get the pace silage open tomorrow. But anyways, yeah. Them bulls definitely made up for the other bulls. So that is it. That is the bulls in. So that's the bulls are after bringing back there now. We need it. I think there's another six in there. That's that pen done. So we didn't have time to clip them or that. I weigh them so we'll do that tomorrow bring back the other six we'll get that done uh bros is getting some more hay uh hopefully we get the silage put open tomorrow as well get them onto the silage and start into them so the plan with the bulls in the shed now is they'll go for about a month now probably till the middle of october when we get the maize cut or we get beet pulled or probably when we get the beet pulled up until we get beet pulled they'll be on a building up ration so it'll be increasing this, the, the whole crop to silage ratio, increasing the amount of meal they're getting, will be increasing the amount of beans, will start increasing the amount of high, high, high energy feed we give them to adjust their stomachs over onto it. Once the beet kind of gets pulled, I'd say that'll be done first. That's when they'll go on to the full finishing ration. And 90 days from then, we should have them ready to kill, or we should have the very first one ready to kill. But last year, I think we started killing from day 80 to about day 110, 120 before we had the most of them gone. We aim for 90 days so that you get the average finishing period to around the 100 day mark. If you aim for 120, you know, always tends to be a bit higher. So we aim for a short 90 day finishing period. Last year went quite well. We were, we got good weights, good scores and all that, but we were a little bit low on our daily weight gain. So hopefully this year we're having the beans from the get go for last year's beans we should hopefully get that extra daily weight gain probably some of the best bulls we've ever put in 530 kilos is the heaviest bull we've ever put into the shed for this time of the year so i have to say I'm quite happy with them now we still have another two sheds of bulls to go in but they won't be going in for another month so we have grass some of them are that bit lighter they just stay out we don't need them already the one day if there's a month in the difference between them all the best we don't need them all the one day so, is there anything else to say? I don't think so. So, that's the bulls. That's them in the shed. What do you think of our weights and that? Quite happy with them. But if you have any questions, anything you think I left out, hit me in the comments down below. Oh yes, this side. The bulls, we have them mixed. And as you can see, no fighting. All that's going on is a bit of riding there. It's what's I was saying. Make love, not war. So the cider vinegar done the trick exactly what we wanted. Not one animal fighting another animal in there. They're just going on riding each other. So oh, that will go off them after a while. But yeah, cider vinegar works. It's a handy way for, for working the bulls. But anyways, that's that. Happy with the bulls, how they've done this year at grass. So just get them fed now, get them finished. And hopefully the price holds up for us next spring. But anyways, we're going to leave it at that for today's video. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. Videos every Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday. That is it from us. Good luck.